Hello info person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss a somewhat intriguing experiment conducted by scientists from MIT University. And specifically a fascinating experiment involving quantum mechanics, revisiting one of the most iconic and mind-bending concepts when it comes to light. Light dual nature. The idea behind light being potentially both particle and a wave and the idea that was explored as far back as 100 years ago. But as I guess the title of the video suggests, in this particular experiment, researchers were able to prove Einstein incorrect. And yet the title was basically clickbait, but honestly it's kind of true. And so let's discuss this experiment and what it means in a bit more detail. But first so let's briefly discuss the double slit experiment in case you're not sure what it's all about. And this is a really old experiment. The original experiment was conducted by British scientist Thomas Young in 1801, so 225 years ago from when I'm making this video. But the original design was to prove that light behaves like a wave. And in this experiment, a beam of light, or in more modern versions, a beam of electrons, or really any other particle, is directed at a barrier with two narrow slits. And on the other side of the barrier, there is a screen that detects the location where particles arrive. And so if particles behave like tiny balls, you would expect two lines on the detector, essentially corresponding to two open slits. But when using lasers or when using light, instead we get a pattern containing bright and dark fringes, referred to as interference pattern. You can see it appearing in this particular video, showing us the electron buildup in the classical double slit experiment. And so in essence it would resemble something like this, or even something like this, with this pattern arising because each particle behaves like a wave passing through both slits simultaneously. And those waves interfere with each other, reinforcing in some places, which produces bright fringes, or cancelling, which produces dark fringes. And remarkably, this interference pattern remains even when particles are fired one at a time, suggesting that each particle somehow interferes with itself and not just other particles. With this experiment fundamentally showing us that observing which slit the particle passes through can change the outcome, or it can basically collapse the wave-like behavior into particle-like behavior. And this is the core principle of quantum mechanics, and of course led to the concept of wave-particle duality. The fundamental principle that suggests that all particles have both particle and wave properties. And so here just to summarize the main discoveries, these two slits will produce an interference pattern and not just two bands, and this pattern results from the wave interference of particle waves. But by measuring which slit the particle passes through, we'll actually destroy interference and make particles behave like particles. And this experiment has been tested with a lot of stuff, photons, electrons, and even larger particles like actual molecules. And so for decades this experiment has been the cornerstone of quantum physics, demonstrating that light and indeed all matter behaves like both particles and waves. But it also presented us with that paradox. The paradox that you can never observe both properties at the same time. And so for example if you try to see the path of a photon, its wave-like interference seems to vanish. And it was actually in the 20th century that this bizarre phenomenon was discovered. The strange disappearance of the interference pattern was really only observed in the early 1900s. And by itself this was a bit perplexing. Why would light act like a wave when unobserved, but become a particle when suddenly we measure its path? And so for some reason the act of observation fundamentally changes the reality of what's being observed. And naturally this created a lot of different propositions in the early 1900s, with the most famous friendly debate being between two titans of physics, Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr. And in 1927, Einstein proposed another one of his famous thought experiments. This was referred to as the Gedanken experiment, trying to catch light in the act of being both a wave and a particle simultaneously. And here Einstein argued that if a photon passes through one of two slits, it would most likely impart a tiny force, or I guess a tiny influence, on the slit itself. And Einstein believed that by detecting the subtle force, it might be possible to calculate photon's path or its particle nature, while still observing the interference pattern representing the wave nature. In other words, he proposed that it should be possible to observe both particle properties and wave properties. But this was against Neil Bohr's propositions. This was against quantum physics. Quantum mechanical models were all based on the uncertainty principle. And Bohr demonstrated that 
If you gained enough information to determine the path of the photon, the very act of obtaining this information would inevitably wash out any interference pattern. In other words, you cannot observe the light and expect it to show you all of its properties. And since then, most of the quantum experiments so far have showed this to be more or less correct. But this new experiment from the scientists at MIT were finally able to definitively show this using an idealized setup. You can find the study by Wolgan Caterley and a team from the MIT in the description below. But here, instead of using traditional slits, they actually used individual ultra-cold atoms with each of them acting as a kind of a slit. Or essentially, each of these individual atoms would be scattering photons coming from various lasers. And the experiment involved preparing a sample of 10,000 ultra-cold atoms using lithium-7 and dysprosium-162. Here they relied on what's known as mod insulating slate with an optical lattice that allowed them to arrange the atoms with an even spacing, an essentially crystal-like configuration with every single atom having identical isolation and distance. And the atoms were also cooled down to micro Kelvin in temperature, just a little bit hotter than absolute zero. And then came the lasers. But here they had to use an extremely weak beam of light in order not to disturb the structure. And the point was for each of these atoms to at most scatter just one photon. And this would produce what's known as Rayleigh scattering, or the simplest possible situation involving an atomic two-level system, or the simplest possible situation involving atoms and a little bit of excitation. And the goal was pretty simple. They wanted to observe how a single photon scatters off two adjacent atoms, simulating the light passing through two slits. But they wanted to observe two different phenomena, coherent and incoherent light scattering. Or just to simplify this, here the scientists could adjust the quantum fuzziness of the atom and change the uncertainty in their position. And so essentially here the scientists could control the wave-like or the particle-like behavior of various photons. And this was done by holding these atoms by shining lasers at them, which would then act like a spring. And so by tuning this laser, they could either loosen or tighten the atom's confinement, changing the fuzziness of individual atoms, which essentially allowed them to control the photon's path and also provided them with information about each individual photon. And so this atomic fuzziness, or in more scientific terms, spatial delocalization of wave packets, contributed to how different photons would be scattered. And so when the scientists increased the atomic positional uncertainty, they observed that the photons behaved like waves, but when the atoms were precisely localized, photons started to act like particles, with scientists confirming that the scattering intensity was exactly the same in both scenarios. Or confirming that these springs don't seem to matter, thus suggesting that Einstein's explanation was incorrect. And this observation perfectly matches all of the quantum theory predictions, providing the necessary validation for Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and suggesting that it's impossible to measure two properties at the same time. And so here, when we measure photons interacting with atoms, in order to, for example, discover their path, the fundamental uncertainty between position and momentum seems to create some kind of a trade-off. And the more precision you expect, the more we disturb the momentum, which seems to collapse the wave-like interference. With this experiment definitively confirming that this is not just some kind of a limitation of measurements, but seems to be an intrinsic quantum property. And this was determined by seeing that all of the light scattered between atoms was only partially coherent, and this partial coherence seemed to depend on the entanglement between light and the atomic motion. Or just to once again simplify all of this, here the team from MIT showed that these ultra-cold atoms acting as slits were not producing any spring effects in order to affect the light's wave-particle duality. And what truly mattered in this particular experiment was the fuzziness of the atom itself. Or basically how certain or uncertain its location seems to be. And so if the atom is much fuzzier, it's a lot more likely to interact with the photon, providing us some information about the path of the photon. And because in this case researchers used 10,000 atoms in order to increase the chance for this slit-like interaction, here the signals were quite easily detected, and the results were pretty substantial. And so this was definitely a really intriguing representation of the classical double slit experiment, confirming fundamental principles of quantum mechanics. But the experiment itself is also important for scientists studying quantum mechanics, because here by using these single atom wave packets and optical lattices, 
it potentially opens up new avenues for a lot of similar experiments and investigations, with scientists behind this particular study already planning a new experiment using even more complexity. For example, using atoms in superposition states or using two atom wave packets that can potentially present us with new interactions between atoms, allowing researchers to study scattering effects on phenomena like coherence. And so here the MIT team did not just reconfirm something we already knew, but to some extent showed us something even deeper. They showed us why light behaves the way it does by using a completely new setup and a new elegant experiment that will most likely lead to new discoveries in quantum physics. But I guess for now at least that's all I wanted to mention. I mean by itself this experiment doesn't actually show us anything new or anything groundbreaking, but it does confirm the fundamental principles in quantum physics and once again reminds us that Einstein was not always correct. And so approximately 100 years after the initial debate, we have the definitive proof of central ideas in quantum theory and specifically the idea that physical matter, including light, can exist as both wave and a particle, but observing one of the forms causes the other to disappear. But I'm sure we'll hear more about similar experiments and additional discoveries in some of the future videos. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos on quantum physics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM it directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access, or maybe by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.